Greetings, it is the first video from the BAS course. First of all, I would like to make a degradation and tell you what this software is. How is the video course organized and what exactly do you see in the first video tutorial? Those who want to skip the introduction can click on the link with a time code for the video. So, what is Browser Automation Studio? I will speak briefly. BAS. The program allows you to automate actions in the browser, to be precise, in the Google Chrome browser. It looks like this. You perform a set of actions, the best remember them and save them in the project. After this, the project can be played. Bus will repeat the same actions you performed earlier. The project can be edited. You can drag the actions and change their order. Replay their value. You can create an edit script directly in the Visual Designer. This means that you don't need programming knowledge. This means that you don't need to pay the programmer. You don't need to learn complex programming language, etc. All of this can be done in the bus with minimal effort. Another interesting feature of the software is the creation of standalone programs. This means that you can transfer this software to any person and it will run from it, even if it doesn't have bus. This opens up wide opportunities. You can transfer your script to the customer or simply share it on the web and it will look like you made it in the usual programming language. I would also like to talk about the application store. This is such a feature that allows you to earn on bus to independent developers without investing any money. You create a script and upload it to the store. It becomes available for purchase to other bus users. The site takes only 10% of your earnings, and the rest of the money you can get in a convenient way for you. Bus contains many more interesting features that will be covered in the following videos. But I would like to mention three more. The first feature is the built-in programming language JavaScript, on which you can create complex logic. And this will be done together with the rest of the expressions. You can find the code on the internet and insert it into the bus. And it will work as if in a normal browser. And even if you don't know the JavaScript, bus will help you compose a complex expression with the help of a visual constructor by dragging blocks. This will be dedicated to a separate video. Another interesting feature is multi-threading. With BAS, it's really easy to make your application multi-threaded, replacing just a few parameters. And the last feature is the price of BAS. You can get most of the feature of the software absolutely free. You have the ability to create as many bots as you like, with any number of threads without paying anything for it. In addition, BAS has open source code, therefore you can change the behavior of the program by adding new features there. But the current source code is available only to premium users. This means that the public repository is not updated after each update. The premium version is very useful for those people who want to sell their programs because it allows you to hide the source code. Reorder. It allows you to prohibit using the script for those who did not pay for it. It also has a convenient license manager with an interface and many other interesting things. For example, for premium users there is professional support. I undertake to post all premium users by mail and by Skype within two business days. I talked a little about the software and now let's start the video lessons. The video course will consist of 8 lessons, all of them are available free of charge. Each lesson will contain information about some particular and specific part of the bus. For example, there will be a lesson about the list, there will be a separate lesson about multi-threading, working with file, text, etc. Each lesson will be provided with many examples. I really like it when the theory is not dry, but is backed up by visual practice. The first lesson introduction will be devoted to the general description of the interface. There will be only a few. If you are an experienced bus user, then most likely you will be uninteresting. But if you are a beginner, then this lesson can greatly help you understand how the program works. Each tab will be reviewed. I will review all the menus. I will click on the buttons and tell you how the program designer works. I will do some action in the browser and even create some simple script that loads the page, takes a screenshot, gets its card, etc. This is the main interface of the program after launch. You see here a few panels, but I will talk about them a little later. 
Now I would like to draw your attention to the record button in the center of the screen. You see that program tells us hit record button to create script. Click on the button. After you click on the record button, the script editor appears. In other words, if you need to edit a script, add some functionality, something to change, you definitely need to click on the record button and go to the script editor. The script editor consists of three panels. These panels are very important for creating a script, therefore you must know about them. There is a left panel for editing the script. This is one of the most important panels. There is a top panel. It is no less important than the previous one. And finally, there is a bottom panel. I will now tell you about all the panels. I will start with the top panel. The top panel contains a list of actions. What is action? Actions are some elementary task that bus can perform. An example of an action is loading a page, entering text, setting a proxy, etc. The top panel contains all the actions that are in the bus. More precisely, almost everything. After all, there are actions that are directly in the browser. But I will talk about them a little later when I describe the bottom panel. So, the actions are divided into modules. You can say grouped. There is, for example, a model browser. It contains all actions to work with the browser. There are script logic, waiters, email. And if I now click on the mail module, then all the actions that are needed to work with the mail will appear. But let's go to the browser model. Inside is a small description of the model and a link with which you can return to main screen and a list of actions. The panel can be resized. And now I will make the top panel a little more for clarity. And there is a such a feature that you can return to the interface to its original state. You can use the menu for this, then the interface, then restore original. This is a very useful function if you don't remember what the panel looked like initially and wants to restore it to its original state. To not abuse resize. Well, you see a list of actions. What can I do with them? They can be added to the panel with a script editor. Script editor is the panel that is one on the left, the left panel. And here is a list of actions. So far, the script is empty, there is nothing but one initialize action. In the future there will be different actions. Why do we need such a list of actions? Of course, in order that it could be repeated. Repeat, edit, etc. Above there are four buttons above the script editor panel. They are very similar to the buttons of a regular player. For example, the play button start the script and perform the action sequentially one by one. There is also a button that performs the following action. There is a button that stops the script or restarts it. On the right there are three more parameters. But they are related to multi-threading and I will talk about them a little later. From the bottom there is a panel that edits functions. Actions can be grouped by functions. Where is function? This is very easy to explain with an example. Suppose uh, there is a function for logging to Facebook and it contains several actions. For example, clicking on the field, entering text here, clicking on the OK button and so on. Simply put, functions are a thing that can make your script more structured and more intuitive. You can also call functions without each other. You can just call several times. Thus, the code doesn't repeat and so on. I will say it again, a separate lesson will be devoted to the function. Now I just want you to remember that everything that is below refers to functions. There is also a bottom panel. Now you will see the start page on the bottom panel. In general, the bottom panel is a browser. I want to show you how it looks and how it works. 
For this, I use the action to load. I select it on the top panel and just click on it. But it's not enough just to click because you need to say exactly which URL you want to load. In other words, you can just say to load something. You need to specify exactly what you want to load in the browser. Clicking on the actions, open the action editor. The action editor can contain several parameters. But now for the action to load, there is only one parameter. This is URL. There are a lot of buttons here, but don't look at them. I will explain their meanings later. Now just remember that every action can have many parameters. The action necessarily has its name and two buttons. OK and Cancel. I will open the page that I want to load. It is Google Mail Com. I click on the OK button and now there are several actions. First, the load action was added to the script editor. As a result, the start page of the browser has changed to Google Mail. I will make the browser bigger so that I can see better. That is, for the site, this is a very ordinary browser. But for developer of the script, this is not. Firstly, you can note that when I move the mouse, the elements that are under the mouth under the cursor are highlighted. I can just click on the next button. The browser will not respond to this. I can't enter a text. By clicking on the item, the context menu appears. And it contains all the actions that can be performed with the element. Here there is a click uh, on the element. Move the mouse and click on the element. A screenshot. Solve the capture. The developer must decide what action he needs to interact with the element. I want to click on the element, so I select the action to move the mouth and click on the element. I want to note that the action and that appear in the context menu are exactly the same as the action in the top panel. They also have parameters. They are also exactly added to the code editor panel. But each such action is attached to some element. And each of these actions has parameters. In this case, the action move and click on the element is pretty much a lot of parameters, but we will not pay attention to them yet. If you just click on the OK button, that the program does what you expect of it. The program will move cursor and click on the next button. Let's start OK. First, you can see that a new action has been added to the script editor panel. Secondly, the action were performed in the browser, the site gave an error. Naturally, this happened because we didn't enter the mail there. We just click on the button. So here everything is correct. Note that there are two cursors on the screen. The first cursor is system. And the second cursor belongs to the browser panel. The program saved the coordinates of the browser, coordinate the cursor and displays it using a starting icon. Now I want to enter my mail in this input field. This done in the same way as pressing the button. I select the element on which I want to perform action. I click on it with the left mouse button. The menu appears. I select type text and enter the parameters. There are many parameters here, but I'm only interested in text to type. I enter my mail here. I click on the OK button. Then there are two events. First, the action is added to the script editor panel. 
Secondly, the action is performed in the browser. Now there are three actions, load, move and click on the element, type text. But as you can see, there are not in the right order. Enter the text correctly between the text input and move and click on element, actions. I will move it now. This can be done in several ways. The first method is not the easiest. For this we need to select cut and paste. This is similar to how a regular text editor works. To select action in the program simply click the left mouse button. An icon appears which indicates that the action is highlighted. You can also do this with the frame. Now that when I select action. The number of selected action on the panel change from the top. The panel at the top is very similar to the panel that has many problems. It contains a button to copy, cut, paste, select everything, clear the selection. There are still under and ready buttons. Now we need to cut button. But now if we just click insert, then the action will be added to the same place where it was before. Nothing will change. I need to somehow show the problem where I want to insert the action. For this, there is an insert indicator, not. This is a tree int with the round edges, which is highlighted in red. This is the active insert indicator. There is also a passive insert indicator. It is highlighted in gray. It is very easy to make the indicator active. Click the left mouse button. If I now press the pause button, then the type text action will be moved to the second place. By the way, the indicator also works for actions that have been added from the top panel. Now I want to test how the script works. And now for this, uh, I need to click on the restart button and then on the play button. The insertion indicator is not always active. Therefore, you can simply reboot the script or specify where the execution point should be. Where is the execution point? This is something that the program will perform as follows. Help to understand where it is. This can be easily understood by looking at the action. Near the active action will be a red arrow. You can also very easily move the execution point by moving the mouse to the action and clicking on the arrow. Now I moved it to the beginning. And you can see that the play button has become active. Now I will run the script and this reaction will be executed in arrow. The page is loaded and in the input field the mail is printed and then the button is pressed. Swapping action can be quite simple. This can be done by dragging blocks. It is possible to edit actions. Suppose I interpret the mail incorrectly, or I want to change the item I want to click on. When I open the editing windows, the action editor and the panel are displayed, which allows you to add some additional features. This will make the script more readable. This can be comments, an explanation of the actions. I want to change the mail and end one to the end. I added the text type parameters and click the OK button. The script changed, the second action changed. A variety of operations that are permissible are actions are accessible through the context menu. Here is you can edit and delete and move. Let's now take a look at the last action. The person who did not participate in the creation of the script can get confused. Which element is clicked on? Why does this click happen? What does this action do in general? To improve the readability of the script, the program allows you to leave comments to it. Do this with editing. You can see that there is a field of text description on the left. Here I can enter absolutely any text. This does not affect scripting in any way. It's only information for the developer. Let's write here, for example, the word next. Comments can also be multi-line and detailed. After I click the OK button, the action will change. A comment will be placed inside it. I click on the next. The program also allows you to search for any item by image. Before that, you need to move the cursor to the panel from the browser. Click the left mouse button. With the green frame, select the image you want to search in the page. The context menu appears again. There will be fewer elements. A move and click on element will remain. Click on the OK button. Inside the block, an image for searching appeared, unlike ordinary actions, in which there is only text. I will delete the old action and leave only the new one. I will select the old one and click delete. I would like to tell you about another very useful action. This action is a log. It also allows you to increase the readability of the script. 
to the module tools and contains only one parameters. There is the data to enter. Why it's needed? This action allows you to quickly find the cause of the problem. This action allows you to tell the user what happens inside the script. For example, your script goes to Facebook and sends out message after the page uh, in Facebook has loaded. You can output it to the log. After sending the message, you can write to the message sent log. And if the error occurs simply during the execution of the script, then perhaps you don't immediately understand where it happened. But if you have a log, you can tell that the error was after setting message. This is especially useful in large scripts. Now I will add a log to the script, but I only have three actions. It may seem superfluous, but in large script it's very useful. I have already entered it mail, so I will add to the log message. I enter it my mail. I click on the button OK and the message to the bottom panel is added. Added the text that I enter it, but added with some additions. There are only three of them. The first addition is thread number. I will go on to more detail in the next lesson. The second is local time. The third is the ID of message. ID of message are a very useful thing for debugging errors. That is, the log displays not only an error message, but also a number of this error. And to each error is attached its ID. Let's say you want to load a page. You click on element inside the page script and you work well. But after a while this element disappears. And if the message didn't appear, the program will simply write that the element was not found. But when it's appear, you can immediately understand where the problem has occurred. By clicking on ID, the action that displays message in the log is highlighted. If I now click on the ID, then the action log will be highlighted. Another way to search for ID is uh, the search action button. To open the search menu, you can click on the button from the top, which is located on the right side of the script editing panel. Everything is very simple, just like with normal programs. I will enter here the message inside the log action. The number will be highlighted in yellow. I will click on the search button, and the action will be highlighted. If my script had a lot of actions, the program will scroll to me the script to the desired block. In the search, you can enter not only the ID, but also the parameters of the action. For example, I want to find all the action that works with Gmail. Two actions are highlighted. With the help of arrows, I can flip them. Another very useful action that concerns the output of information is the result action. You may be indignant that the log action already exists, but this can be useful if you don't want extra rows. Let's say you register an account on any site and want to display all successful signups so that it will not be superfluous. You can do all this with the help of the result action. I repeat that if you use the log, then the action are mixed with additional lines. The action result has two parameters, data, which also were in action, text input, uh, and the result number. The result will be displayed in the next tab from the log in accordance with the result number. I will choose uh, the first number. This means that as soon as uh, I click on the OK button, the result will appear here. Uh, I will delete the result action since we will not need it anymore. I have already said more than one that actions have parameters. Most actions have parameters, but the parameters that I show that are used were like input. Those, they were transferred to action. This could be the URL of the page you want to load or the element you need to find. However, actions can also return data. Those, this is the result of the work. Well, for example, the action get element content HTML, get uh, this card and somehow should return this text. And in every action, the output parameters of it is a variable. What is a variable? A variable is some kind of name for the data inside the script. It's some kind of repository. I will give an example. Let's say we use the receipt of the page code. You can say, let the page code be output to the log. Uh, the user will see it and everything will be fine. But suddenly, I need to somehow process this page code. Check if there are any stop words. Take the value of some element, run on it, make some logic depending on whether or not. That's what the variables are for. Now I will show how it works. I entered the mail and it didn't exist. The site returned me an error message. And I want to receive this error message. I click on the element and select the get element text action. Just this action contains one output parameter, but it's called variable to save. 
You can name a variable as you like, but there are some limitations. First, it should be letters in uppercase in the words. It should be large letters, and Bus immediately suggests a name that is more suitable, such as safe text. I don't recommend to call variables too simply, to not get confused later. It's much better to call variables guided by the function they perform. For example, error login account. I click on the OK button. Even if you didn't uh, select a special name for the variable, it will still work. I came up with something for my own convenience. There was a new action. You can see the arrow to the right inside the code block. This notation will occur for actions that have output parameters. How can I see what Wally uh, variables contains? To do this, you need to find the variables inspector. It is accessible by the button which shows the beetle. Uh, it is located at the bottom of the script editing panel. I click here and see only one variable uh, and its value. Uh, if I had more variables, then they would all be out here. Well, let's use this variable somehow. The simplest, uh, simplest thing uh, we can do is bring it to the log. I used to write some text in the field, but now I will use a variable. Pay attention to the text that falls out. Such a menu is in any input parameters for action. Select Insert Variable. Now the choice is given to two variables. The first is the cycle index and the second is the error login account. Cycle index is created automatically in any script and you can get rid of it. I will choose the one I created earlier. Uh, in the field appear the name of variables in square brackets. When the program sees the square brackets, it understands that it's variables and uses its value. I want to print an error message and click OK. The lock added a message that was on the side and was stored in a variable. First of all, I would like to say that in the field you can output not only a variable, but also your own text. For example, I will add a message to the field from the side. I will add the text in front of the brackets. As you can see, nothing happens, because uh, I have not yet performed the action. Uh, to perform the action, click on the red arrows and click play. I talked about this earlier. Uh, in the logs, we can see a new message with additional text. Variables have such a feature to change. And the fact that our variables at the moment contain the text of a side error does not mean that it will be the same in another part of the script. Variables can be created uh, using a special action, which is uh, the module script logic set variable. There are two input parameters, variable name and you can name the variables as you like. You can also select a variable from the already created by the principle that I showed earlier. I will choose the variable that I created and enter a new text here. I click on the OK button. And now you can see that our variable has changed in the variable inspector. If it is output to the log, then it will have a different value. Now I will delete the action set variable, and I will tell you more about some feature of the program interface. Pay attention to the browser bar. It contains eight buttons at the bottom left. They help to scroll the page up, down, left, right, but since the Gmail site is placed in this size in the browser windows, clicking on these buttons will not work. However, if you go to the site that has a large size, then these buttons will be useful to us. For example, Yahoo.com. The button which is at the bottom allows you to scroll the page completely down. Accordingly, the button at the top allows you to scroll the page to, to the very top. There is also a disconnect button for editing the script. If I click on it, the window will unfold to full screen. If you click on it again, the interface will return to its original state. There is also a setting button. This is the setting for the script. It should also be said that when creating a standalone board, uh, this setting will be preserved. For example, if I select Enable Flash, the body will continue to use the flash. 
this uh, tuning is quite useful. There is a disable uh, web RTC and canvas, skip frames. Skip frames helps reduce to load on the processor. If you set the number to about 60, the number of frames will decrease uh, when the page loads. There is also restart browser process on thread start. This allows you to completely clear all browser data between threads and delete even uh, such things as cookies, which are very difficult to remove from a regular browser. If you disable emulate mouse movement, the mouse will move clearly in a straight line. There is a setting that allows you to restore the connection, it's called Proxies Reconnect. If you are not sure if you have a good proxy, then the setting will help to set a proxy correctly. Now look at the top panel. This is a panel with a list of actions. There is a function what to search. If you forget in which module the action is located, you can search it through the search. Let's try to find the action load. As you can see, the search gives us um, the action that are in the module browser, load cookies. Also, the search uh, shows links to videos and links to articles. This can also be useful. There are uh, also buttons that will help you to speed up the time of working with a script. These are the buttons bookmarks and history. In bookmarks are the actions that are used most often. In the future, to find this action, you don't need to search it uh, in the modules. Uh, I put here the load and log. We add the action proxy. If you want to remove this action from the bookmarks, you can drag it to the trash. There is a button with a history panel. History is the action that I used last. This works by analogy with a normal browser, where there is a history of loading pages. And of course, the history and bookmarks are saved between restarting the script. At this stage, we have a fairly simple script. Let's try to run it and once again show how it works. But first, I will remove the Yahoo load. The action is executed in order. The page is loaded from the mail. Enter the mail. Click on the next button. Look at these actions. A click is made. Then the log is output. The text is output. And the log is output again. The message appears almost instantly. Actions take place very quickly. Because of this, an error could have occurred. During this time, the server would not have time to return the answer. There are several ways to solve these problems. The most obvious and simple is to use the sleep action. The action of a dream during the time set by the developers does nothing, just sleeps. This action is in wait models. Let's set it to 10 seconds. If the action takes too long, you can click on the interrupt buttons and always stop it. True. The execution points is lost. It will need to be rebuilt. I will run the script again. Now it's uh, wait. It's necessary to wait 10 seconds. And you see that the correct message was displayed in the log. By the way, the method from the log can be cleared using menu. But the action of sleep is not very optimal. In other words, I put 10 seconds, but in fact all this can think longer. It can work in less time. Let's say he solved these problems in just 30 seconds. And the remaining 9 and a half minutes, the script will be in, a, in an activity. Therefore, this thing is not optimal. In addition, the proxy can be bad and the script cannot perform an action in 10 seconds. So there is a, another way. In this model, there is an action wait for the full load. I will move the insert indicator so that it's added after the log. This action does not take any parameters. It contains a fairly complex algorithm to determine uh, whether the page was loaded or not. This action reacts only, not only to the lo full load of the page, but also to some network requests. It works correctly in case of a video stream, or for example a network chart or some other. I will add it and it will wait much less than 10 seconds. Let's try to run the script again. As you can see, this time everything ended faster. We can simply edit the old actions, instead of adding a new action to the script editing panel. 
And if after read the script requires waiting for the page to load completely, then we can specify this in the setting of the action. So, the script will look more compact. I will run it again to make sure everything works. We have a script, but so far we have only run it in the script editor mode. This is good, but uh, this is not the best way to run the script, because the script can be multi-threaded. The script editors have only one thread. He pauses between actions to organize debugging. Therefore, it's the best to run the script in startup mode. Now, I will show how it works. In order to run the script in the startup mode, you must first click on the stop button. Let's click on the run button. The script has already started its work. The only downside is that the actions are not shown here as an script editor. But look at the log. All messages are output to the log. We don't see all that happening, but the script still worked. There is such a feature in the launch mode that a list of browsers corresponding to multi-threading appears on the panel. You can see what happens inside by clicking on the check mark of the browser. A window will appear. Each browser will have its own window. Inside there is a cursor and nothing more. This optimizes the resource of the program. The work is faster. The computer resources are consumed less. In the program there is also a script report. I will run the script again to show what script report is. The script was completed and a script report appeared. This is a window in which all the error messages are and the running time are displayed. If uh, the thread are not working properly or if there is some errors inside the script, the script report will help to find out where the error was. This is a powerful debugging tool. In addition to errors, uh, there is an ID of erroneous actions. Errors are sorted by a frequency of occurrence. In other words, if the message appears at sounded times, uh, then it will be at the top, and if the message appears one, it will be below. Let's edit our script and deliberately make an error there to see how it will look in the report. Click on the record button. The script editing of window appears. Instead of Gmail site, I will enter some non-existent one. I will start the script again. As you can see, he immediately gives me an error. I can determine what went wrong, guided by the script editor. At the moment, our script checks the mail into Gmail database. What if the user wants to enter another mail? For example, if you want to log in uh, to Facebook, you cannot specify and change data in the script. The user may want to enter other data. And what should we do? Remake the whole script for two lines? That's why the program has a resource editor. It allows you to ask the user in the startup mode or in the write mode. For example, what is the password from Facebook? How many threads are required to run the script? What message do you want to send to another users? Etc. Therefore, the script can become universal. Let's specify a resource instead of mail. To do this, go to the panel that is located on the right. There is a create new resource button. If I click on it, a dialog will appear. There will be many options, but we will look at them in a separate resource lesson. Now I just want to show that this resource exists and there is a possibility to set changing data. I press the button. You must specify the name of the resource. I will name it email. You can specify the description in Russian or English. There are many types of resource, but for now we will only choose fixed string. Click on the next button. I leave blank the default value field because I want the user to type something there. I will click on the checkbox 
string must be not empty because I want the user to type at least something. The resource was created. It remains only to click on the finish button. Pay attention to the restart button. It flashes. This means that the script needs to be restarted for correct operation. After that, you can see that the script is not just launched, but asked to enter mail. The red icon is also present here because nothing has been typed yet. I will type some mail that does exist. As soon as I start typing, the red icon disappeared. I would also like to talk a little about setting up the window. I will tell you about the standard values. If I click on the default button, that field will be empty, because at this moment this is the default value for it. You can also save in a lot of settings. If there are a lot of settings, this option will help you load them. So you can have many profiles to run the project. Also in the project there is a choice of language. If I choose English, then the program will have a description in this language. There are also advanced settings and a folder with logs. I will talk about this in the next video. Outwardly, nothing has changed, but I have the opportunity to use resources. I will edit the uh, action type text and replace it with the value of the resource. Remember how we insert variables. Similarly, we can insert resources. Choose the second action, load from file, user input, database. And here is a choice of resources. Since I have only one resource, I will choose it. There are two parameters for configuring the resource but uh, now I will not focus on them. You may notice that the value in the braces was added to the field. This means that the value of uh, this field will be replaced by the value of the resource. Here it is necessary to delete the old value of the mail, otherwise bus will enter a strange string with the two mails in a row. I click on the OK button and restart the script. I start the script. As you can see, the mail I set for the resources uh, at the start of the script is entered into the browser. The script will not work incorrectly because the action get element text is superfluous. After all, there is no error in the browser. What to do in this case? There is the most frequent question because the developer may seem that the script is frozen. In fact, the script will wait 60 seconds and give an error. The program doesn't uh, under any circumstance stop the script. It will issue a message and restart the thread. Now I just click on the interrupt button. Let's see how the user enters a resource in the launch mode. Press the stop button and then the run button. The resource is enter um, the resource is entered exactly the same way. A window appears and now you can specify a mail. We will enter the fake email here to make the script work. If you enter the real mail here, uh, the script will hang one error. Let's fix this. Let's go into the script editor. We need to perform all the step before get element text. We can perform action one after another by clicking on the run next action button. But it's easier to do this by clicking on the run until this button. Bus will perform the action sequentially. So, what are the problems? What are we trying to fix? Gmail redirects us to another page on which uh, this element doesn't exist. Bus waits 60 seconds and then gives an error. But this can be corrected by changing the timeout. For example, from 60 to 5 seconds. To do this, you need to add the action. In any action where there is a waiting for an element, there is a button with an hourglass. It is to the right of the cancel button. If you click on it, a field will appear where you can specify the maximum waiting time. It is set by default, 60 seconds. Let's enter 5 seconds. Click on the OK button. As you can see near the hourglass appeared a figure. Click on the OK button. Now the script has changed. This value will certainly remain after the script is restarted. Let's test this with a mail that really exists. As you remember, the value is taken from the resource, so we need to restart the script. Bus will ask us to enter a new mail. 
Restart the script using the blues re uh, restart button. Enter the real mail and click on the OK button. Run the script. We can observe how this action and perform a turn. Now Buzz will wait 5 seconds instead of 60 and give out an error. An error has appeared. Failed to wait for element. Here there is an error uh, ID and its selector. About the selector we will talk later. Now our script gives errors. But it can be fixed. In fact, uh, mistakes are normal. Be happened. The program in this case restarts the thread and works on. Let's say that the login and password for the site are good, but in the personal cabinet the HTML site has changed. The program will give an error and think that uh, the username and password are no longer valid. This will be completely incorrect with respect to the user, because he will input the correct data and the program will generate an error. I want to make uh, the script more logical. If the error exists, uh, then we will output our error message to the log. Otherwise, we will output it to the mail is registered log. To do this, return the script to the state where the error was on the page. Restart the script. Enter the fake mail and run until get element text. How do we check if there is an element on the page? Click on the select, uh, click on the element and select is element exists. The action is ordinary. It is similar to other actions. It has one uh, input parameters. Before us uh, is quite um, an unusual variable. The variables uh, I showed earlier had a string as the value. This variable uh, can have only two values, true and false. In other words, either the element on the screen is visible or not. The variable is called is exists. I will click on the OK button. I want to see if the variable is added to the variable inspector. The value is true. In other words, the element is present on the page. If it were not there, it will be false. I will tell about such variables in a separate lesson. Now just remember that it can be inserted into the if action. If is a conditional statement. Simply put, either one or the other action are performed depending on the given condition. This is exactly what we need. If there is an element on the page, I will output it to the mail is not registered. If there is no element on the page, I will output it to the mail is registered. Let's see how this will work. The if action is in the script logic. It has only one input parameter. Here you can insert a lot of different things, but now we use the variables exist. There is one more parameter, uh, add also block. It must be used if the expression is untrue. Since we need two variants of the development of events in our script, I will select this option. This action is not quite usual. There are insert indications inside the block. If we want to insert some action into the first insertion indicator, the action will be executed only if expression is true. Also will only execute if the expression is false. This is an ideal option for our occasion. Now I just add a log to two places. If the message is, um, then I output to the log mail is not registered. In order not to create an action a second time, I just copy it and edit it. I restart the script. Let's see again how it works. Well, you can see that the action worked. It was highlighted in yellow. Now let's try to enter real mail. I'm doing the same. As you can see, the script tries to execute the action, but it can't. Now we will remove two unnecessary actions that prevent the script from executing. They are irrelevant, so they are unnecessary. Remove get element text and log. Restart the script. 
Let's start again. The script worked correctly. The script can be improved so that it works with files or, or with threads. I will not concern this in this video lesson, but it's really easy to do. Now that we have a good and correct project, I would like to share it. This can be done in several ways. The first way is to transfer the project file to another person. The file contains all information about variables, resources, etc. If another person runs the script on his computer, he will see all the same. It's very easy to do this. Just select Save As. This is done in the same way as another program, text editor, etc. It's very easy to do. But there is a small problem. Another person will have to download bus, open the project and run it. In addition, you will have to explain to user the difference between record and um, run. The user may become confused. To solve these problems, you can create a standalone program. To do this, you need to compile the program. You can click on the compile button. But now it is inactive. So um, you should click on the stop button. Now I will show you how the compilation of the program works. A window with several parameters appears. The first parameter is the type of compilation. This option does not imply that the script will be protected. In other words, you agree that other users can see the code of your script. People can share your project with other people, do whatever they want with the code, and so on. If uh, this option is not suitable for you, uh, then there are others. Other options mean a compilation with protection, which allows you to specify the password to the program, change the interface, update, uh, etc. But this can only be used by premium users. If you are not a premium user, then you can also compile the script, but the program will not protect it. The first to fill are name and version. You can name the script as you like, for example, Gmail Checker. A folder appeared. There is one executable file called X, and our programs is in no way depend on BAS. You can do anything with it, for example, transfer it to another user. What happens when I launch this program? When the program is launched for the first time, the launching windows appear. Here there is a progress bar that shows how much time is left before the download of necessary components is completed. In the future, this will happen only the first time it is started. This is necessary because the user's operating system are different. Therefore, the program is installed on the computer in a universal way. A window appears where you can select the language. For example, choose English. This means that the program interface will be in English. At this stage of the launch, the user can select the input parameters. I will enter real mail here and click on the OK button. The standalone program interface is slightly different from the main interface. There is a built-in browser in which you can see what is happening. There is a log, report and some basic settings that will allow you to manage the script effectively. We can make sure that the script is working correctly. We have achieved our goal. So the first lesson is over. It looks like a review of the program capabilities. You will be able to study the program in more detail in the following lessons.